Hey you guys, this is Jessica and Noam, and we are back with another episode of What's That Sound? And today we are going to explore the drum sound that you hear in Amy Winehouse's Rehab. Amy Winehouse's Rehab drum sound it is crunchy, it's lo-fi, but it has the modern low end of like a hip hop record. It is one microphone, but it is deceptively complicated to get it exactly right. We're gonna figure it out today. First, let's talk about what the drums are. So to get this sound, we used a Gretsch drum set from the 70s, and we did not put a front kick drum head on so that we could get a very focused, a short sound. The snare drum sound is arguably one of the most important parts of this whole sound we're trying to capture. To get the Motown-esque sound that we want, we used a five and a half by 14 inch Ludwig Acrylite and dampened it a lot to cut some of that resonance. For cymbals, we used 14 inch K-Suite hi-hats and we dampened them quite a bit with tape so that we could cut some of those overtones. And then for our crash ride, we used a 20 inch dark Zildjian crash. When they made this record, they were using a single microphone on the drums. They used a Shure 55, which we don't have in the studio, but the capsule is pretty similar in sound to a SM58, SM57 capsule. So we ended up using a 57, and it's placed right at kind of the trifecta of where the kick drum, snare drum, and hi-hat meet. It's pointed right at the side of the snare drum. Now, when you mic something with a single microphone, it's hyper, hyper sensitive to the placement. So I actually had one of my assistants sit there with the microphone and hold it and move it up just half an inch or down half an inch. And I kind of gave him thumbs up or thumbs down. The tiniest little movement was completely transformative to the sound. So you could say that an album that sold one billion copies probably worldwide was recorded using a microphone that all of you have in your homes. They're sitting in trash cans right now. People are using them to hold up their tables, but there's a little bit more to it than that. We're gonna dive in. So why don't we start out by listening to the raw track of the 57 before it hits our tape machine and before we do any processing to it. So this is the sound of the 57 alone. No processing on it. We're running through a Neve 1073, but we're doing no EQ on it. It sounds cool. Like we got the, we got the uh, placement really, really dialed in. So it sounds pretty cool. It's definitely lacking quite a bit in the low end, and it doesn't quite have the energy that I would want out of this drum part for a record like Rehab. Uh, so to start with EQ, we're gonna use some Pultex to shape the sound a little bit. We're gonna use the Pultec EQ P1A, and we're gonna use it to add quite a bit of low end to this sound, right? There's not that much low end to start with. So we're adding kind of as much low end as it's gonna let us push. And we're gonna do that at 60 Hertz. We are then gonna pull a little bit out of the reduction circuit on that Poltec, which ends up voicing it like a little bit above where you're boosting. So if you, if you boost and you cut on the Poltec, it's gonna boost at 60 Hertz. It's gonna cut at maybe 100 Hertz or 150 Hertz or something like that, right? So we're gonna end up with this curve where we get this low end, but we get rid of some of the mud that can sometimes happen in a, in a drum sound. Then looking at the high end, we are doing the same thing. We're boosting and we're cutting in the high end on our pull tech, right? What that's gonna do is our boost is gonna be a bell boost around 8K, right? So that's gonna boost some of this brightness of, of this snare drum. And then we're gonna cut at 10K and that is a shelf cut, right? So it's gonna cut off everything that makes it kind of this hi-fi sound is gonna get reduced. It's, it's gonna get reduced, but it's not gonna feel like a dark sound because we're pushing that 8K. And I'm adding a little bit of 200, I'm adding a little bit of one and a half K, and I'm pulling out some 700 just to further shape the sound of the drums. 
and what we end up with is something that's really musical and vintage. So let's take a listen to that. Now we're bringing the tape machine into the equation. While we're recording, we're gonna run it in real time through a tape machine. We're using an Otari MTR90. Uh, it's a great sounding two inch tape machine. It is a 24 track machine, but we're only using one track on it. And we are gonna feed it this signal really, really hot, right? We're going way past what the uh, distortion point is of this machine because we wanna get that distortion. We wanna get that uh, saturation and that transient control so that every time the kick drum hits, it distorts and it also keeps all of the kick drum hits at a really similar volume because they're gonna hit that threshold of distortion and they're not gonna be able to get any louder than that. So let's take a listen to that. It already sounds great, right? We didn't really do that much to it. It already starts to sound great. You can hear that like a lot of low end got added already, right? And that's just the nature of the tape machine is it's gonna add some of this low end weight. It also added a bit of high end, but the high end is, is kind of from the distortion that's getting added to it, right? So it's a really, really musical sounding high end that doesn't feel too harsh and doesn't feel too crazy. This is probably how they recorded that sound, but then they sent it to a mixing engineer and he did further things to it, right? He added EQ to it, he added samples, he added samples on the kick and the snare. Um, he also added some compression to it, right? So now let's listen to it with a little bit of EQ added, let's listen with some samples added, some subtle samples just to solidify the low end and solidify the snare drum. And we're also gonna add a little bit of parallel compression. We're gonna do that with a 33609. So we're here at Rackstrax recording in Chicago. Obviously we have a ton of gear that not everyone has at home. So if you're trying to do this kind of sound at home and you obviously don't want to spend the money on a vintage 1073, there's a bunch of alternatives that you can use that'll sound really, really great. Uh, for the 1073, Golden Age makes a super popular version of it that's way, way cheaper. For our tape machine, UAD and Waves make really good plug-in versions of similar tape machines that you can use that'll give you that vintage sound. For the 33609 compressor that we're using, the VCA compressor and the Poltec EQs that we're using, Warm Audio makes much cheaper versions of those that are like accessible to home studios and they can sound really fantastic. That was the crunchy lo-fi drum sound for Amy Winehouse's Rehab. And something really cool is we put together a sample pack of all these drum sounds that you could find at the link in the description below on the Reverb blog. And as always, tell us in the comments what other drum sounds you'd like to see us break down. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time. <laughs>